let's go to Dead Row. Oh, you still got hail going on up there? So, yeah, I do have a pretty good hailstorm going on right now, so hopefully I don't lose you guys and it doesn't start banging against the garage door loud enough to where I can't hear you or you can't hear me. Again. All right, so we're going to talk uh, turning bowling balls into yarn balls. So, a completed one in case things go wrong tonight. Um, see what it's supposed to come out like. Doug, Doug, can I interject on you, please? Yes. All right. Uh, members, this is a demonstration. Um, these are the basic rules on demonstration. Doug is doing the demonstration. If you have questions for Doug, they're more than welcome. Uh, if you want to change what he does, wait until he gets done and then tell us how you want to change it. And we're going to mute everybody right now. And Doug is going to reactivate his microphone to do it. Um, and that is so we don't pick up any background sounds, um, and et cetera, et cetera. Be nice, be kind. It's a demonstration and it's now yours, Doug. All right. So at any rate, this was a bowling ball at one time. If I was to put the top back on and kind of kind of keep where the finger holds, right? right? Cut the top off, throw that aside. Thumb hole is where the yarn comes through. Now, last night, and I made this thing for my wife a few months ago, and she's never said anything to me. Last night, we were trying to look them up on like Etsy and stuff to see if anybody else is making them out of bowling balls, and I kept seeing all the wood ones. And they all have like this curly, cute design, and then it comes out at the top. And I said, you know, I didn't do that on your bowl. I don't even know what that's for. And he said, that's so I don't have to cut the yarn. If I want to change out yarn, you can just slip it out. Oh, do you want me to put one of those things on your bowl? And she said, it would be cool if you could. So apparently that's what I had to do. I got to put the little notch thing on there. But at any rate, um, the only thing I added to this bowl was to give her a flat bottom. I did pour some resin in there, uh, just so it would be uh, a perfectly flat bottom for her ball of yarn to sit on. Okay. So now, let's talk about the one that I said I was going to practice on during the week. Uh, I did, and I'll show you where I failed miserably. The Once I got on the inside of this one, it had, the, the closest thing I can compare it to is pork. But I don't know if petrified pork is a thing, <laughs> but it was rock hard pork. And it just took forever to cut through. And then in the very center was just regular soft styrofoam. So that came out easy. I could not get the pork to separate. Well, that didn't help. To separate from the sides of the bowl. And I was trying every tool I had. And finally, the most successful thing I was having was a wire wheel on my drill. The problem was something started catching on me. And I looked, what is going on here? And uh, let's see if I can catch it in the light. Right there's a hole um, where I'd actually melted through the plastic. So, I've never had that issue before. There's the hail hitting my door. Eddie, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Hear you real good. Yeah, we, oh, can yeah. we can hear you. We can hear you. We you well. Yeah, perfect. All right. I can try and run to the other side of the shop and see if it makes any difference. It's probably we can hear you just fine. Yeah, right. we, can, we can hear you just mm -hmm. fine. Doug. Yeah, no problem. You don't need to move. You're great. You guys can hear me? Okay. Yeah. I just can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> we can barely hear the hail. So at any rate, uh, petrified pork, for lack of the correct term. 
made me fail this bowl because I melted it just from getting it too hot and trying to get it off. This is the top of the bowl, and I, but I did, I took it to the bandsaw to cut it so I can kind of give you guys a better idea of what I was dealing with. Whatever this substance is, super rock hard. Yeah, and Doug, that will dull a bandsaw blade in a heartbeat. Okay, so today I went online and I googled the name of the bowling ball, Galaxy 300, to learn something about it. Found out this bowl was made in the 70s. Actually found them on eBay for around 30 bucks, and I paid $2 for it, so I guess I ruined a $30 bowling ball. With that, as I was playing around online trying to learn some things about bowling balls, what I learned was from the 30s through the 60s, they were pretty much made out of rubber. The 60s through the majority of the 70s, they were made out of a polyester plastic which is what I suspect this is then. Then, late 70s, early 80s, um, they went into something called a urethane. Then in 92, they started making the bowls out of reactive resin. So what does that all mean? What that means is if you're at the thrift store trying to find your $2 bowling ball like I did, Take a minute to Google the bowling ball and see if you can learn something about it and what the substance is that it's made out of. It's only going to tell you the outside. It's not going to tell you about the material on the inside. Now, on a more current YouTube video, I found the uh, cores of the bowling balls are primarily made out of, if I'm saying this right, barite, barite, silica powder, and limestone. Those are just current bowling balls. I could not find anything to tell me about older bowling balls. Kate had mentioned in the chat about asbestos, and I have to agree with him. Asbestos was used in everything up until the point where they determined it was illegal uh, because they realized it was a cancer-causing agent. So just use extreme caution if you're going to try this out. You're going to see me wear a ventilator tonight. Might be an overkill. But I'd rather have the overkill and not get cancer than just wear a dust mask and get cancer. All right, so with that said, we're going to talk about probably the, the second hardest part. The hardest part, of course, is going to be hogging out the core. The second hardest part, in my opinion, is getting this ball centered. So let me uh, Are you guys still there? Somebody was trying to call me. I'm going to try and get this set up to where you all can see me. Try and get this ball centered. Looks good. Okay, so what we got to keep in mind, of course, is we want to keep the thumb hole. We want to get rid of the two finger holes. So if you just start with the thumb hole up, then you're going to be okay in that aspect. And then I'm just putting it between centers, so I got a, just a standard spur drive and then a, a standard live center. Nothing special. And I'm just going to eyeball it as best as can to start, and then we'll make our, our little adjustments as needed. So that's way off. <laughs> so let's go to the high point, which looks like it's probably right about there. Let's try and drop it down just a little. So 
little closer, right? We'll probably get it a little bit better. Not probably to make that work. Oh, now I'm way off. We're gonna call that close enough. It's obviously not perfect, but we're gonna we're gonna scrape it to true it up. And we're also going to put a tendon on it. So with this bowling ball, it's kind of rough. Because where I want to put that tendon, <laughs> the um, finger holes are a little, a little close. So the only way to adjust that, I'm going to have to drop it on the other side. Instead of just, give me just a minute. Like I said, this is the, the tedious part. It's kind of a little annoying, I guess, if you will. Now, of course, I'm going to be way off again. Okay, trying. Okay, so we'll do a quick truing. We're not going to focus a whole lot on this side, just a little just to balance things, because this is all going to get cut off anyway. So with this one, what's the material on the outside? Again, I don't know for sure. I'm not a bowling ball expert. This one is called a uh, what was this one? Cold blood hammer. So if reactive resin. Up, say again. It's a reactive resin ball. It should be. So when when I was looking at these ones online, it looked like they were came out around 2013. So hopefully it is a a reactive resin. But again, I don't know. Probably. So we'll try a couple of different things. We're going to throw a bowl gouge against it first, see how that does. And then we'll go to the carbide cutter. On the, uh, what I suspect is a polyester bowl, I put a very sharp bowl gouge against this. And this thing just chipped out like crazy. I felt like shards of glass were hitting me. Um, and then I went to the carbide cutter. And it worked just fine. So my voice is going to get coupled because I'm going to throw this on. Go away, Shadow. And then along with my respirator and put the seal on my face. Can you zoom in any closer? Say that again. Can you zoom in any closer? Um, I think I can. And let's see, if I put you guys on the other side of the lathe, you'll be able to see the tool cutter. <laughs> Out for you. Is that any better? 
Looks Work good. for me, <laughs> Chief. Okay. Looks good. And then just for the record, there are no holes in my garage door right now. So I can't come flying off with this default. I probably should have got that more balance than the vehicle. We're at 504 if anybody cares about that. Okay, so we're going to take a look. So, pop you off the tripod and bring you up closer. You all see how bad that's pitted? Lots of, lots of tear out of you. It's probably because it's wood, but basically, plastic's just breaking instead of slicing up. That's what's going to be. This is just a standard carbide cutter. Still getting pretty bad tear out on that. I'm going to put that one away. This one is a negative brake carbide cutter. Starting to look like what we like to see, right? So, I, I can't tell you why the negative rate works better, but it does. Okay, now here's a significant issue that I did not run into before. I just had a big crap show up right there. So, <laughs> this thing may fall apart faster than we want it to. However, this is the part of the bowl that we're going to cut off anyway. So, let me go ahead and get a, a tenon form. If I was smart and put the bowl on the other way, I could have made my tenon easier. I can put it over here. This guy could be able to see it because of the camera angle. Would maybe a little thin CA in that crack help it from spreading? It may. So, we're going to cut that off anyway. So. Not too worried about it. I get me a, a tenon made over here, so I'm gonna try and screw this up first.
Okay, so you can see how bad I'm off right now. I'm cutting and then not cutting, it's just turning air. I'm going to take a minute to just try and balance it a little bit better because here's what we don't know. We don't know really how thick the reactive resin is before we get into the stuff that we want to get rid of. And since I'm turning it off balance, I'm obviously going to get rid of it faster on this side than I will that side. And it'll just screw me up later if I don't have enough material there. Let's check out the light. Well, this should be the high side, right? Not a physics major or anything, but that's what I'm touching. I'm under the cover. Okay, we got it the whole time. And of course, it's only harder because I'm doing a demo, right? <laughs> oh, I'll oh, fail. Okay, if this is a problem for me and I gotta fix things anyway, let's turn it because it's gonna be easier with the lieutenant that side. Okay, I just feel pretty lucky. Well, at this point, let's just go with it. It's a dollar bowl, right? Well, we're going to lose the two bucks if something goes wrong. Maybe a garage door could fly by. This is just a standard square carbide cutter, not a negative break. I'm not worried about taking a pretty line at this point, just cutting some material away. That was pretty good, yeah.
Okay, so now we're spinning. Eight oh eight. And this way we don't care so much now because it's gonna go away. But. And then a little trick with the carbide cutters, I think I've heard Eddie talk about it a little bit. Instead of just putting it flat against the material, if you just pop it just ever so slightly, trying to pop a little closer to a gouge, it's still not a gouge, but it's still it's a, just a little closer. Pretty good. Uh, maybe they're not. <laughs> Looking at the ghost one up there, it looks alright. Oh, well, you know, I probably hit my thumb a little bit. Though. Yeah, I did. I set my tool on my hole. That's why I was bouncing. Okay, so now I want to bring you around just to show you. Yeah, you know, let's do that. So I'm held on with a tenon, right? Nothing that we don't already understand concerning wood bolts. What I'm going to do on the bottom here is just give it a little bit of shape so that I can kind of create more of a... ...that I can complete it. So what I did, I just kind of messed around with the shape a little bit so it's not just a boring sphere. As you're getting into your own opinions of what it is that you want to do. Are you guys still there? I just got one of those emergency storm storm alerts. We're here. Okay, cool. Sorry. About that. All right. No, that's all right. We need the rain up here. I'm happy to get the rain, but it wasn't so bad to turn the gentleman. I'll call the weather guy and complain. Okay. Where are you at, Doug? Doug, are you in Phoenix? No, I'm in Prescott Valley. Ah. I'm, I'm almost two hours north of Phoenix, hour and a half north. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to play around with the changing the shape a little bit here.
Uh, something like that. And now we have raspberry Sylvester. <laughs> All right, and then let's figure out about where we're going to cut this off now. I'm thinking since that crack is right there, it ends right there, that's probably going to be a pretty good spot. That plug is probably going to come out when you cut it there. Right there, yeah. Uh, yeah and you got to be careful, out. there might be a leaded weight under that. Does somebody want to jump over here and hold the phone for me real quick while we do this? <laughs> Alright, let me, uh, let's start with a party tool. And I should have sharpened one before we got started, but hopefully this one is sharp enough to rest it. A little too high for that. Well, somewhere about in there. Alright, you guys can see that alright? Yeah? Looks good, Doug. Okay, we're over a thousand now. A thousand twenty-four. Okay, let's stop just to see what we're dealing with. Okay, it looks like it's in there pretty good. The crack did stop right there. You can see where we're off balance. Well, you can't see, but I can see it on the inside. I'm hitting the white material and then back to blue. So that's just where I'm, I'm off center. But I'm, I'm really close to being through the plastic. So the good news is it's just feeling really soft. So hopefully when we go to hot this up, we're not going to have the issues I had before. Okay, I'm going to cut well, uh, like a little relief cut where you just make this a little wider. This will get and grab the tool from me. Or I'll flip off like that. Well, we don't tell them how much plastic because the streamers will go away. Now you have a new rig. Okay. Oh. okay, so that snapped, <laughs> but I'm good. Are your and pants all right? Is, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I planned all that. That was worked into the show. All right. <laughs> so, basically, that's going to help us hunt things up. But what are we learning? That never happened to me on any of the other bowls that I did this on. But I suspect all of the ones that I have done before, 
have been the uh, polyester. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's the uh, reactive resin that's just more brittle, but we did see that crack in there, and I suspect that's probably where it just broke. Um, so I don't want to totally say it's the reactive resin and not quite happened. It was probably more so when I hit it with the bolt gouge, shook things up and caused the crack. Or again, I bought this at a thrift store. Who knows how many times the balls have dropped on the ground and it could have had a hairline crack so that we just opened up. So, but of course, be safe and then when things go wrong, you'll, you'll be okay. I got a shield on. I got a respirator on. I was out of the line of fire. And I'll go find that other piece later. And I bent a uh, party piece. Well, with that said, let me get the saw and we'll just cut that the rest of the way up. Members, if you're just joining us, we're watching Doug Rowe in Prescott, Arizona. He's turning a bowling ball into a yarn bowl for us. Uh, he has started out with some good, bad, the ugly about what he has done on his practice pieces. We've had quite a conversation regarding what type of ball to turn and uh, what the contents may be. Or uh, you can pick, pick them out when you get to... When you see a ball at the thrift store, you can Google the name of the ball and see what kind of material it's made out of. And then you can decide on that if you want to turn it. Remember, some of the older balls do contain contaminants, and you never know what's in them for balancing. So be careful. We'll continue now with Doug Rowe. If you have any questions or comments about the demonstration, hold on to them. Let's get it all the way to the end. Um, my only comment is, Dave Rhodes, you better have that blow up on tape, bud, because uh, we go, we won't see that on a website. Absolutely. We, it's this is live action wood turning. And again, if, if nothing else, if nobody learned anything else, safety gear, safety gear, safety gear, right? Because you just safety gear. Right. You don't Use know when first things time. are going to go wrong, so you just always got to be prepared. And then if they do, you'll be all right, or you'll be almost all right. Have you allowed me to mute myself? Yeah, I'll mute myself while I've got this. Somebody rushed over to Berndt's house. She's all, all conventilated because she thought Doug may have got hurt. Um... We're here to take care of each other. And Bob Grinstead says, says he's on his way to help Doug out, but the rain may hold him up. He's only about a thousand miles away. Matt, when you can, unmute yourself, because we can... There we go, okay. You got me? We got you. Okay. And I'm like, it's been all... I'm just going to lightly go over it one more time, chew it up as best I can, um, and then we'll get the hogging that up. I just wanted to try and balance a little bit better for me.
Behind your head, Snark, Doug. Say again? Stay behind your head, Snark. How are we doing on time, Dave? How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great, man. We got a clock and everything. Okay. I want to take up the whole night. But... You're not taking up anything, sir. You're sh we're sharing information about turning. Before we go, before we end this evening, you, you see that, that the stuff that's bonding to your shield? Um, here's a tip for you. If you clean that shield with son of a gun spray made by STP, um, it won't attract it and hold it as much. It kills the static. Uh, oh, man, I lost it. It, it reduces the static electricity around it. Okay, good to know. Alright, let's turn it back in a little bit. How's that? Put that in chat, Eddie. I'm working on it right now. That's sounding pretty good to me, and it's at 9.92, so. Everybody's got their own preference on where they like to turn, so I just, to me, I usually kind of go off the sound of the wave and the feel of everything. Oh, yeah, let's see what that is. My just stumble. Yeah, there's a little lip right here that I'm catching. It's like a maybe a fiberglass sleeve that's in there. Yeah, that's what that is. Got a little bit cleaner cuts. I'm going to try and clean up my uh, cuts on the bottom. You won't be able to see that right now, but it'll just take me a second. But essentially, I'm just kind of using it like a, like a scraper, which it is a negative break scraper. But being real gentle and trying to watch my lines disappear. Something like that. Okay, I'm going to look to this side just to see how sand of the white and uh, looks like I got plenty of room to play with still. And here's what we got. I still got one high spot. It's right where the word hammer was. Here I wrote demo on this. I remembered which bowl I was using. I'm going to turn that just a little bit more to get rid of that. That's right where the uh, bubble is, so it's always in the way.
Well, I think at this point I'm just going to leave the word hammer in text because it's all readable and it might come up when I say it, though. So, we're close enough. All right. I'm going to back the side pot up just for a minute so I can move around here. Still going to get some air on my face for a minute. Set this up and start talking. Take the elbow buster out. You need to talk to Dane Chanley or what get one of those uh, head rags that he wears. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you how to tie one. My uh my son gave me one for welding. Uh I guess for well it's just the top. A son of a gun doesn't work on the dome. <laughs> I was wearing wearing a do rag because I got tired of screwing up first week in all caps. Yep, I know the feeling. I thought I found the perfect turning cap, one of those things you wear when you use a airless sprayer. Um, no. That's good for one day. Yeah, that's one, one, that's one use. Yeah, because... Okay, you, so if I measure with my personal bit, I can go all the way in with this one, and I'm not going to be anywhere close to making a funnel. So we'll go ahead and we'll max this out. But before I do that, I'm going to play off the tripod again to show you the inside of this ball. Okay, you can see the two different colors, correct? Gray and white? Yes. So those are different materials. Uh, this white, if it looks out like some of the ones I've done in the past, this is just going to turn to like a talcum powder or a uh, Depending on your lifestyle, a few day, a few decades ago, maybe you'll start singing in your head, riding that train. Hi, on the anyways. That's what this white is. This gray is almost like a. The closest thing I can relate it to is almost like a liquid nail. It, it's a really weird material. But uh, anyway, that's what we're gonna get into next. It's good. Pair it up, Doug. Pair it up. Here goes two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollar holla. Holla. I turn my speed down. Just out of curiosity, what do some of you turn out when you're hollowing out or uh, starting off with your Forstner bin? You're just putting the Forstner bin in there. Three to well, five hundred. I never run Forstner bits. I never run Forstner bits above four fifty RPMs. If I, I I have burned Forstner bits out by running them too fast when I first started. So the slower the better. Three fifty, Doug. Uh, three fifty. Three hundred. Also depends on your feed rate. If your feed rate's very slow, you need a slower speed. If you have a feed rate quicker with a faster speed, you can go in quicker and come out without your Forstner bit heating up too much. So it's a fine balance between the two. So I do it in between three and five hundred, depending on the material and the feed rate I feel like that day. Okay. So since this isn't good, we're all kind of learning and play together. We'll start at, you guys want to start about 300 and then go up from there if we need to? Yep. Yeah. All right. 
Let's see if we're down. Anyone listening, hearing all those numbers, uh, the key thing on Forstner bits and drilling anything like this is heat. Um, the, the faster you go, the more friction. Uh, the harder you push, the more friction. So as Dane said, as Kate said a minute ago, there's a fine line between them. So don't get stuck with the numbers. Think about the heat being generated on that bit. That bit's too hot to even put your finger on it. It's too hot. So there's 303 right there. How's that angle for you guys? Can you see that all right? Yep. Yeah, it looks like a good, good right there. That's what it's supposed to look like. It is slicing yeah, good and shaving. Yeah, good pencil. Pencil sharpener shavings coming off, uh, melting and clinging to itself. So this one should be safe. Right there. No signs of a terrific heat buildup around the material. Every now and then you want to back up and clear the, clear the cutter from the wood. So. Yeah, I gotta jump back to the other side to get to my hair. <laughs> This yeah, one of the other game, one of the one of the other games I have played is I have a uh, a stick of a stick of beeswax I keep it on the top of the lathe, and I kind of you know when the when the Forstner bit starts heating up, I just rub it on there and it eliminates the squeaking and it and it helps th keeps things cool and moving smoother. I keep I keep air blowing on the bit as I'm cutting, so it helps clear the shavings, keep uh, and it up. Hey, that's a good idea, Trey. We're, we're going to try that technique right now. So I don't have to keep walking back and forth. As Trey said, blowing shavings on is a, that's an old pen drilling kit. When you were drilling pens in your drill press, you, you cannot imagine the amount of force that quill gives you pulling down. And if you could eject a nice cool spray with a nozzle like that, even in a pen, you'll you'll save from burning material up and tearing it up. And removal and just what Trey was saying, it, it helps for an overall effect. It's not your friend. Well, we've all lost our friends this week then, because it's hot out there. Members, we're coming up on the top of the hour in just a few moments. Uh, that does no way at all impact this demonstration. Uh, we don't own a clock on demonstrations. We want the most we can get when we can get it. We share the information. We walk in participation. Uh, there's not a way in the world I'm going to tell him, a, a member, turning a piece, put the brakes on because the clock says so. Ain't going to happen here, folks. Are not going to be hurried on their project. Nope. The person is bored of watching the demonstration. The boys log off and head back in late. You can watch it on a repeat. Dave Rhodes will put it on our right. website. Right. It takes him about four or five days. You know, Dave's kind of lazy. He does the world's greatest website for us. But, it, you know, he. Yeah, and it's free, and you know, well, it'll take about well, four or five probably, days to get you there. Well, he'd probably be able to get them loaded right here while it's not sending him questions and asking for additions to the site. <laughs> not doing that, Dane. Well, I know he's just sitting there waiting for my email, so. Absolutely. Right, Dave? Absolutely. At least you know at least one person's looking at it, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that's right, and I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, something things pop up on your calendar, just not pop up on my calendar. It said fifty three years ago today we took one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Fifty-three years ago today. That'll date you. I mentioned dates and calendars while Doug is doing this piece. If you have an event you'd like to add to our events calendar on our website, that Dave Rhodes also manages. Um, all you have to do is put it in our chat. You have an event coming up. I see Scott's put a couple of things in tonight. Cage added a couple items. Uh, it is a free open event list. You do not have to. There's no allegiance. There's no alliance. There's no clubs. There's no groups, no gangs, nothing. It is open to wood turners. You have something to share about an event with wood turning? Share it. Okay, I'm going to put you guys back to the other side. That's pretty cool. I've got to check. Oh, there we go. There we go. I need to plug you guys in. We'll get the floor rest all set up and then I'll read the list of the camera. Hurry up, Doug. Eddie just said you only have 20 seconds left. <laughs> wait, 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 that wasn't me. Nothing is sacred here. And how's that looking for you guys? Yeah, it looks good. Looks perfect. Good. perfect. All right, so with this material, we'll start with the bowl gouge again. Just see how we do. We have to go to carbide, we'll go to carbide. I hope we get on this one. Zero. Channel, you need to go away. We'll see more. Uh, mics, folks, mics. That's nine fifty one. I'm going to double check my time in here just to make sure everything is right. And feel like we are. That is to take a drop it off. Get it off. You gotta get rid of this little ridge right there. So, you know what? Before that thing catches my hand, I'm gonna hit that with the negative break straight because you know that cuts the plastic better. Or the resin better. Because that's got a, a broken pinky written all over it.
There's that other plug, and maybe it's really starting to break out. I'm wondering if I can't just pop that up. Mm. Or try putting it with super glue, Doug. Yeah, or just turn it out, make it a little shallower bowl so you don't risk having the crack in it. If he's going to put a curly cue in it, he could start the curly cue there. Yeah. You could also wrap it in saran wrap or duct tape to make sure that the centrifugal force does not pull a crack apart. I've done that before, Steve, with the, I used the clear packing tape, but I had a bowl that was just full of cracks. So I was like, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, better safe than sorry, I always say. Maybe like a mortar coming at you. Yeah. I think they epoxy those plugs in. You're gonna poke yourself with that tool. Bring me a bandit if I do. Remy, get out of the way. Really, they, they don't use their type of epoxy. I actually did that on that thumb the other day, and I thought it'd be better. <laughs> it becomes a design element. It's a feature. We can carve it and embellish it to make it the artistic focal point of the bowl. So maybe I could use this part. Right to back down to do that curly cue thing. Can you come out since it's open now? Yeah, that was the plan all along. Yeah, Galaxy did that for you. How about that? Sure, it was. Yeah, Doug, you might be doing good, but Bob Moffat's going to do this with a coring kit in a future for us. Yeah, I make a vertical out of it. You use that coring. Yeah, that'd be cool. that'd make a good bird bath. You can use the holy side for a bird house and the solid side for a bird bath. There you go. It'd be the the writ of bird houses. You have a idea? Three, cut them in half, up on in, and Reassemble them like Jim showed us earlier. Yeah. You guys just think of everything, don't you? That'd be cool. Little bowling ball box. Try to cover the main primary topics. Okay, I have no idea how this is going to cut, so maybe it's going to fly off the lane or maybe it's going to cut. As you can see, this white stuff really soft. No problem at all, but I get into the gray, thick with nail stuff. It's just a hard cut. Then you get the part white cutter again. But the company I was getting these from, they just, uh, I decided to start cutting things down. Says he's, uh, he's gonna enjoy retirement more and get, just do wood turning and not run a carbide cutting business anymore. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It was like Big Guy Productions or something like that. He's an outlaw. Avoid him. <laughs> He hangs out with people like Doug and Dane and Matt and Brenda. Besides, I heard he was out of business. Oh, he's trying. He trying. He's trying big time, boys. He's trying big time.
We just had a schedule adjustment in our demonstration schedules. Uh, Dane lines up our demonstrators, and just now he had somebody volunteer to do a demonstration on August the 10th. The entire evening would be one live long demonstration called Tips and Tricks. And it will feature, feature every single member in the crew. And the, the deal is this. If you want to be part of that evening, you must come with a tip or a trick. Share what you have with turners who have not seen them or think they can better it. Well, I'll be sitting on a tailgate, tailgate talking about that. August 10th, Tips and Tricks. Good. And I just saw where Shell Oil says if you buy 100 gallons of gas, they'll give you the car to put it in. Hey, how about that? Hey, Dave, for that tips and tricks, if you want to make a note, I'll show how I uh, run up a plug for my dust collector to make my dump rack fit it. And of course, everybody and their brothers got a way to fill track. I'll tell you my way that I do track if you want. I'd rather know how to go safe than go fast any day at all. It's a fine talcum powder coming off the tool, but you can actually save some of that for inlay. So later in cracks or voids or holes, you can inlay yeah. with a different color. And you can dye it. Dye it, dry it, use it for later. Yeah, the white stuff you can, you know. Not with even soapstone powder. We have to get one of the ball end mill users to do a bowling ball. Yeah, I wonder how that would work. Then. You stealing my thunder, man? I was just thinking about that. I've been looking around at a lot of action cool. in the chat about it. I it would do awesome. Up for it. Yeah, I was curious about the same thing. I was like, hmm, I wonder if a ball in there would work here. Yeah, I'll find me or send me one of those bowling balls, and I'll be happy to do it. You're down to goodwill. $3. Yeah. You know, I've been haunting. I've been looking for those for like a year. I've been haunting my Salvation Army and, and similar places, and I haven't seen one yet. So maybe I'll just, like, uh, uh, go to a bowling alley or something and say, you got any old balls yeah. you're selling, getting rid of? Yeah, right. they do that. They'll sell them off, or you can find them in the dumpster. If you don't mind dumpster diving. But no, they sell them off. I get some great things out of dumpsters. Where would turn us? That doesn't hold us back. Right? It's good, it's good. Okay, Bob Hotch wants to jump ahead on his tips and tricks thing. Bob! Keep that in your mind, because that night we want we want to hear that tip and trick. It's a great one. And if you got Wi-Fi issues, all you got to do is turn your Wi-Fi off on your phone and use roaming. So this mic stuff coming out a little bit different than my last one in that it's uh it is kind of. Make a little bit of ribbon. But I'm telling you, I think every bone bow is made different. I don't know. Yeah, for the most part. There is a tiny code, very small, written on the bowling ball. 
And if you research that code, it'll actually tell you where the ball was made, what materials it, it was made, the year it was made, and the facility it was made in. I want to know if the throw, the throw a good hook. That's all, how the information I need. It's just to research the materials in it so you can take the proper safety precautions if there is asbestos in it. How thick is the plastic on one of those bowling balls? Say again? How thick is the plastic outside on one of those bowling balls? So on this one, I mean, it looks like it was maybe a half an inch or so. Uh, Hey, thank you. There we go. If we look at the top of the one that I cut off before, you can see that the transition between the, the plastic and the... Oh. Got a quarter in. I've seen a mistake. It's a half inch. Yeah, I've, I've seen them fall in the bowl. Actually, if I put the ruler on there correctly, it is a half inch. Somebody needs to go back to shop class 101. That's somebody's name. <laughs> you can't use a ruler. Well, up to you guys, but well, we got a long way to go. Well, you're good, Doug. Hear it up. Just got that fiberglass sleeve to slip out of the foot hole. See the light bulb through there, maybe. Doug, some of our members have to understand that we're more into technique than finished product. And what you're doing now is going through three or four different types of materials with different types of tools, holding it different ways, and accomplishing a project. That's what we're here for. Well, keep on going. We got plenty of time, Doug. No worries. Once we get through this liquid nail substance, it'll go faster. That is not the official name, it's just the name I gave it. If anyone's interested, I did find some cool videos on YouTube. Just type in, how is a bowling ball made? You'll, you'll see all these different substances get put in there.
Hey, Abby, there's maybe something you want to talk about while I'm cutting this. But, so when I'm cutting, I can't see my tool in there. But uh, what I watch is not live, if you want to kind of explain that. So you're watching your, well, I call it a shadow, but it's not really a shadow. Uh, because you can't see your tool. Uh, there's a couple of turners that think turning it in reverse. So you can reach across and watch that tool work. Works for some projects. Uh, for some projects, I have to explain that. But this gives you some versions of how you can get into a piece, turn it, and, and turn it safely. But if you're using that, that unfortunately, if you're using a ball end cutter, I don't think you can go in reverse with it. And uh, there's some other tools that won't work that way. Either please start at a low a slow speed before you give that a whirl. Uh, no, with the ball with the ball end mill, Eddie, the, the flutes are the wrong way. You're right. Yeah, it won't work. Mm -hmm. I have done the turning in reverse and cut on this side, and I like it, but I failed to set my set screw once. And I cut them all. I didn't come on. I need to discuss that. that. I'm getting ready to put that warning out there. This truck, I don't have a set screw in it, so I can't even show what we're talking about tonight. I picked that truck up from Doug Moore on the uh, full barn, and he told me he got it from Zombie Wood Turner. So, there's definitely uh, videos on YouTube that you can find of somebody turning and reverse and cutting on that side. Oh yeah, and there's videos of them uh, turning on that side and getting a violent catch and having their, their chuck and their work spin off. Yeah. Drop on the lathe and drop on the floor. And Okay, so, I was wondering how I've been using this much air and my air compressor hasn't turned on yet. Pretty certain it's turned up. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm going to mark this fence here real quick. And this is just so I know where the light is going to end. Ooh, it's going to begin. And if you remember in the very beginning, I did not have the ball perfectly centered. This is now the downside to that. Let me take the camera off the tripod so I get a closer explain that. So what's gonna happen is I start to turn away the white substance. I'm gonna hit the blue pretty fast right here. As I turn this ball, look at how thick it is right there. So then in order to get all of the light off, I'm going to be turning the plastic a lot thinner on one side than I am the other. The workaround to that, if it's going to be too bad, is I'm just going to have to stick a sander in there to get all the light out from the... To the naked eye, you probably won't see that it's that up. But the wave will know for sure as I'm cutting it. Makes it so half the bone will go flying away again because I'll turn all the heat inside of it.
Okay, now just for my own safety, I'm gonna grab the negative weight, kind of soften this up, because right now it's just spinning razor blades. That plastic really, really sharp right there. Right there, it's even for a wood bowl. Uh, Mark Soleil, when he's talking about the different cuts on a bowl, he talks about I'm not saying it can't still cut me, but the other one was definitely different. Looks like we got about 15 minutes left. We got plenty of time, Doug. Don't worry. I'm going to say, if you guys want to stop, I'll finish this on, uh, I can do it. I can do a live turning in our Facebook page. No way, wood turners. And then that way it'll be there for everybody to see out there. That'd be cool. I'd like to see that. One the other night, they were doing one plastic bowl with powdered on him. And if any of you are not friends with me on Facebook, just send me a friend request and you can see the orange ball fail. A good place for dust collection, eh? It is to be an advertisement for a good dust collector here. If anyone's wondering about this tool that I'm using, this is a combination of a Big Guy production Starbucks butter and a pry bar from Harbor Freight. Thank goodness for Harbor Freight. Letting, letting frugal wood turners spend more on expensive tools. <laughs> so that white stuff is kind of difficult to turn out as well, Doug. Say that one more time. That white stuff is difficult to turn out, or are you still on the liquid nail? Um, I'm I'm right on the edge, and as, as I'm getting down in here, I, I kind of went in like a cone, so I still have a lot of liquid nail down here. But at the top, it's all the white stuff now. Oh, okay. And where you're seeing the blue show up, it's because of where the uh right plug right. is right there. Yep. Yeah. I gotta say, there was a lot of demand for the bowling ball to be turned the last few weeks, so hope everybody's enjoying it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's educational. Very much. Nice stuff. Yep. I like the fact that regardless, regardless of the medium, pay attention to 
the tool presentation of it. It also correlates to doing a natural wood bowl. Wooden carbide cutters. Oh, I just heard something. Sound good. I don't know what I heard, but I heard something. You, you, might, you, might, you might need to put it back in your truck again. Yeah. Does it seem like it wobbled? Yep, yeah, it's like get around. see a lot of comments in the chat tonight. Um, folks, if you joined us a little bit late, you missed some of the details and the changes changes that have under, went, we've uh, went through tonight. Uh, you can always watch this on a repeat on our website, worldwidewoodturners.org, uh, where we post full demonstrations and uh, full meetings and clips of demonstrations. I'm wondering if they'd uh, track somewhere again if I'm not seeing it. We're going to go again. You guys watch. Tell me if you see any crazy wobbles. And I'm going to be focusing more on the sound. It's definitely way out of true now. No, oh, I think it might have been. I might have got a cast on when that the plug is coming through. Where we're seeing the, the blue come back out again. Yeah, it's not happy with me turning on the edge at all right now. As I'm getting closer to the edge, I'm really... And there, it, it's probably right in here. Where it's happening. You gotta treat it like a regular bowl. You're, you're losing that dexterity to the side there. But, uh, yeah. Being off, off, oblong, whatever you want to call it, being off center though. Yeah. Doug, do you have a bowl inside. steady? Well, that's not going to, it's because of the material, it's, it's going to cause it to collapse. Come back out, you can make it one inch thick for your wall there. We've got plenty of white stuff there so it's supporting the resin. Yeah, there's plain material that just screws us off so it's such a way to make fun.
Don't y'all wish we had instant replay? It's a funnel. Although technically, oh, no. it's not because I haven't gone all the way through yet. Right. Slow motion would be cool. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay. Oh, God. It's all at work. Eight Which one and a half. But you know, we would know. We wouldn't know what not to do unless we looked at this. Right. Sounds like it's kind of hit and miss with those. Uh, yes. Turn it around and, and redo your, your recess there and rechuck it. That, that's what I was thinking. And then make a mortise instead of a tenant. Right. And yeah. then don't, don't expand it so tight. Yeah, because I can mean, do that. Know, not a half an inch of plastic there. You got so. plenty of material there. Yeah. Look that thing against your chuck right there, and, and bring your life center up, and, and screw up your and make it make a recess for it. Okay. Well, I've also got, as I'm looking at it, there's a pretty good scratch going right here. Not mm -hmm. scratch okay. I think what I'll probably do with this one is put it on the, uh, face. Ugh. I feel like I've been in Mop 4 all night. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mop 4, here we go. Um. Yep. Anyways, no. I think if I put it on the drill press with a, uh, a large enough Forstner bit to come outside that crack, I can make a nice round hole. The only downside is my jaws can probably open up further than I would prefer. But it's worth trying, I think. What do you guys think of that idea? How about I a think glue you're block, good. Forster? I think your forstner bit will jump all over the place because you don't have a center point for that forstner bit to follow with a solid surface for it to follow in to drill into the solid surface. So your forstner bit is actually going to jump all over the place and not drill correctly. A better option would be a glue block and then return a tenon. Okay. Or Doug, pour some matching resident there, let it harden and start over. Yeah. Yeah, and then you'd have a solid surface to drill. Yeah. Alrighty, well at any rate, I think it's time to call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> you can have to go there. Great idea. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't get any uh, holes in your garage door. No, no, it, it definitely flew off oh, in the wow. right direction. Um, I don't have to go explain anything to the wife. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Let's kind other, of than, other than why there's bowling ball resin all over your pillow tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? You think I should shower before I go to bed tonight, or you think I'm okay for a few more days? There's yeah, a wig on. I think you're okay for a few days. Yeah. No, let's let's avoid talking about the wig, please. <laughs> She'll love it. Um, what one suggestion on centering it in the original thing? Sure. You turn a cone, and then use a drive to push against that cone. That cone would center the ball automatically. Oh, that's a good idea. So it's so that would center it, and then you and then you have more material on the outside because you only have a half inch or less material to start with. So. A cone, a, you know, a round cone, slip, slipping it in that, and then uh, use the drive to uh, drive it from there. I have a way I can show you that I center bowling balls on the lathe, and they're perfectly centered. All right, we'll take a look at that. I was thinking of the same thing, Trace, because I've got different size cones that fit on my one-way revolving center, and uh, that's exactly what I have done. I've held pool balls, shoe balls, um, spheres, everything else. And the way I line them up is cone to cone. Can you turn a cue ball? Yeah. I've turned a cue ball. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm going to work Doug Miller into doing a cue ball. I bought a few of them because I saw that on YouTube too. And I, see. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. 
think that'd be a mini demo to follow this demo. You see? Hey, everybody, uh, let's <laughs> give a hats off to uh, Doug uh, Rowe here. Demonstration tonight. Did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the ball did not want to cooperate. <laughs> Absolutely, Doug. Thank you very much. That is much. awesome. Thanks, Doug. Great job. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, that's that's awesome. demo. Great job. Well, Doug. Great job, Doug. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug, buddy. <laughs> Good job, Doug. We appreciate you sharing, man. I went to the bowling, bowling ball today. I'll just walk in the now. house with all that stuff on you. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm gonna definitely blow off with the air compressor before I go in there. Otherwise, yeah. I'm wife might get my life my shirt after she kills me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. Professor, Professor, I appreciate it. We appreciate your demo tonight, Professor Rowe.